Welcome back, Zero K fans, to the last match of the January 2018 2v2 tournament. We have a tiebreaker between 400 Google Frog and Pyrostasis and Kingstead. That is going to be going on right now because we have. Well, we might as well. It's. It's. What's here? We have the match. It's on Fairyland. We have the players set up. They're going to be going for whatever they go for, which is probably going to be something fairly. Fairly standard. I mean, Fairyland is a fairly standard map. This is likely to just be good play all around. Maybe some cheese. We have seen 400 Google Frog go for their cheese, but I kind of don't know. I feel like this is going to be one of those maps that's played a bit more standard. We'll see, though. Google Frog going for rovers. Interesting choice. This map does work with them fairly well, but it's... I mean, there's some slowdowns going up and down hills, of course, but or going up hills, of course, but that's fine. But... Other, otherwise, I'm not sure what Kingside's going to be going for. Pyrostasis, same thing. Kingside and Pyrostasis have been doing this thing with the... Oh, only the jump bots. I mean, we have seen... Oh, sorry. Shashu's Ch going for the jump bots. Kingstead? I was kind of going with that as well. Pyrostasis was doing spiders a lot. Kingstead's varied. But... This is going to be interesting. So if Pyrostasis goes for spiders... Which they are. Oh boy, that's going to be tricky. So py spiders can do decently well, and Pyrostasis has been largely doing hermit push spider play, but this map does not have anything that particularly favors spiders. There's, like, a cliff over here you can kind of work from, but all of the openings, all of the points between passable ground are cliffs with water in between. Jump bots can handle that fine, spiders can't. This entire construction is specifically designed to stop spiders from going across it. And if done wide enough, stop anything from going across it. That isn't air. Now, that being said, nothing's really going on out of the ordinary from the Northeast team. I mean, vehicles and cloaky bots, or rovers and cloaky bots, perfectly normal. South, the, south team, rovers and spiders, like I said, a little unusual, but again, hermit push, or I guess a strong venom redback, maybe, that could still do the trick. That could still work, especially with the vehicle support. It, I am thinking more in terms of 1v1, spiders are a risky move on this map. But in 2v2, it can work when you have the vehicle support, when you have other mobile units that are basically letting your slow-moving spiders get into position and covering them if they need to retreat. Considering, however, that their opponents have entirely fast-moving armies, that could still be tricky. Especially, well, especially if it's primarily focused on glaives. We are seeing, however, 400 wants some weavers. Oh, sorry, reavers, not weavers. Wow, that's got to be tough for anyone who does not pronounce R's as R's and pronounce them as W's. Talk about confusion. I never even thought of that before. But clearly by context, they're different. Weavers don't fight. Still, though, it is going to be a bit of an approach from Kingstad and Pyrostasis. They want to get a push forward. Clearly, Kingstad wants to make sure the Redback has some room to move. But again, it's very clear that Pyrostasis just wants to build up. They want their Weavers. They want their massive amount of build power from the Weavers. They want to use that possibly for reclaim. I could see that. And... From there, it's just going to be a matter of how well they can hold. Because right now, there's good prep on both sides. The Reaver is there. That'll stop most Scorchers and pretty much anything else. But the Fencer can stop the, re the Reaver. So 400 is forced back. So really good reads on this. I like that. Kingstad knows what they're doing. They know what their opponents are likely doing. 400, getting prepared. But yeah, got prepared. Got counter prepared. Now it's a matter of positioning. It's a matter of can these Scorchers get in from Kingstad and deal with Google Frogs? And the answer is yes, but with some loss potentially if Kingstad can't escape. But still, Kingstad got a free Scorcher. They can pull back and repair. They've got this. However, at the same time, this Redback is way out of position, and the Reaver should be able to stop it. I mean, the Redback is clearly going in to try to deal with something, anything it can find. Scorchers, Lotuses, Masons, doesn't matter. Something. And it will be able to hit a Scorcher a little bit, but the question is, of course, can it manage to hit that? And the answer is no. The answer is actually Ronin are going to make its life miserable, and that's pretty much the hard counter. The Ronin come in here, that Redback is done. Does, however, manage to get a Ronin, though. Just thanks to positioning, thanks to it coming off the cliff where there was not a whole lot of room to maneuver, it managed to get something for its death. But I'm still not sure I agree with the sacrifice. That being said, I do agree with this positioning here with the Fencer and the, sc and the Scorchers. That is strong. Still, Google Frog manages to get the north or the center ridge. So, key victory, despite the fact that in terms of units, Google Frog has actually just barely won this. But just barely. Once the fencer changes its attention, that, that scorcher's dead. 
Google Frog has still just barely won this, but they have won this. That Stardust is not easy to get rid of, especially not with Pyrostasis going for a bunch of pushes. And it looks like Pyrostasis, I think they're doing the distraction play again, going for Heavy Flea, seeing what they can find, and then probably turn that into a Kulikibot Factory or anything, really. Like we saw last time, it's a distraction play. It was, I believe, against a near catastrophe. They pushed that out there and just got fleas everywhere. Actually, though, considering Ronin are in play, the fleas are also a good option to deal with those. Either way, this is what what Pyrostasis likes to do, and that's exactly what's happening. The flea hermit combination, at the very least, providing a cover for the flea for the hermits. Great screen there. I mean, like I said, they're cheap. The only downside is that it is an opportunity cost of building the factory. Pyrostasis can't build much else. They want to keep the screen up. And at this point, this Reaver's just taking it for free. Still, that does provide the pressure. That does provide a distraction. That does provide Kingstad some room to push forward. But again, risky. These Scorchers are going to be Kingstad's commander's undoing. It is dead, even with level 2. Even with... What do you even have? Riot Cannon. Riot Cannon will help, but it's dead. It is done. It managed to kill some Scorchers in the process, but Google Frog, I would say, has taken this. Google Frog has territory control over this entire section. Pyrostasis is trying to take some of it back, but it's it's going to be a close run thing if they manage to take the southeast. However, Google Frog, no, once they move the Scorchers in, the southeast is done. The northwest, it's a bit more in favor of the southwest team. They might be able to take that, with the Fleas at least providing some support, stopping the Ronin from going complete ham. But the Scorchers would also stop that. The question for the question clearly for Kingstad and Pyrostasis is can we get in? Can we find some way to destroy something? A Lotus or a Radar Tower or some workers? And the answer would be yes, if it weren't for the fact that the fleas were way in front of that the Scorcher line. The Scorchers got in first. That would have been free. This entire base, and even as it is, the Scorchers managing to take a fair number of structures down in the process. But now this this flea screen is not working. Pyrostasis clearly understanding is not working, switching back to Hermit. It's, like I said, not a terrible strategy, but at this point, Pyrostasis and Kingstad have both lost their commanders. So, whatever economic advantage they might have gained from that screening and from that pressure, they've lost. They are managing to take some pressure on the southeast, though, but that is key. If they manage to get that, that's two metal extractors, that's four metal per second, that brings them closer to parity, or at least reduces the advantage. And the sheer number of pickets here, at least making it easier to deal with. I mean, it's not quite finishing things up, but it does soften up the Scorchers coming in here leaving Google Frog with far, a far smaller army than they would like, and a far weaker army than they would like. And at this point, of course, all the all the reclaim, that's entirely power stasis. Is that almost 400 metal? That's theirs. It's done. And Google Frog seeding the southeast, well, leave that Lotus up to provide a little bit more support to make it just a little bit harder. Buy some time, but that's it. That's all they've, that's all they've got. That's all they've got to the southeast. That being said, the northwest that is entirely Google Frog and 400s. They have completely dominated the Northwest. Nothing is in place. The early game, the early game aggression coming in from the Southwest team, coming from Kingstead and Pyrostasis, to try to hold that has completely collapsed. Everything built up here has collapsed. Really, the loss of the commander meant Pyrostasis had no way of projecting any pressure on the Northwest side. And the Southeast side, similar story with Kingstead's commander, but there was enough proximity to the main base to at least allow for a bit more pressure to be pushed and allow for these expansions to be taken. For the time being, that being said, that's not a turret. That's storage. That storage is necessary, but it's also covered in the main base. So really, not the best option, I'd say. Storage doesn't have particularly large explosion radius either, so it's not like it's going to do all that much on its own. So sadly, for these re for these weavers over here, the southeast side is done. Google Frog managing to take it ultimately. I mean, I kind of mentioned before, it was dead. It was Google Frogs, but... The pressure didn't quite manage to be consistent enough, and at this point, the main base is about to be assaulted. The Stardust will stop the Glaze, but that's not really the point. The point is the Ronin and Reavers on the north side. Very few defenses are on the north side, and that's entirely known by the southwest, so Google Frog and 400 take second place. King and Pyrostasis, you get third place. Not bad, though. Especially the match overall. Like, actually, Northeast had a massive economic advantage. This is a strange situation where an economic advantage did not lead... Wait. Oh, darn, I got mixed up. Ah. Northeast had an economic advantage. Totally led to victory. Totally normal. Nothing unusual here. Actually, a lot of reclaim, too. Yeah, metal income was fairly even for the most part between the two teams. But Southwest, uh, around the mid-game. I mean, the flea screen is kind of fun, but that is still 20 metal pop. That is still metal that could be used for other things. It's good as a distraction play, but the problem is when we saw it used against a near catastrophe, it was both a larger map, 
a wider map, because we are dealing with corner starts, not edge starts. And Contested Canyon is an edge start. So that's a totally different situation. Not to mention, there was a stronger army already in place to deal with that. That was mid-game for a switch. That wasn't early game to cover, I guess, your army. Maybe try to find some cheap kills, get some Ronin here and there, which they were all basically supported, so finding that is going to be tough. At any rate, didn't work out. Kind of fun to see, though. And with that, that is going to be the tournament. That's it. We are... We are done. We have everything... Oh, actually, that was... I keep forgetting to put the bottom of the thing in. Whatever. So that's that's it. We have tiebreaker done. We have the tournament done. We have the winners are, of course, the ones we saw in round seven. Which, I mean, no surprise there. They, It's going to be... It obviously would have been tough to get through that. But yeah, Black Touching Shatra, well done for winning. 400 Google Flock, congratulations on second place. And Kingstad and Pyrostasis, well done getting third place. You still fought hard. You still came in with a 5-2 record. So overall, like really, they only lost to... Who did they even lose to? Kingstad and Pyrostasis, they lost to... They lost to Black Touching Shatra, so the winners of the tournament. And Cortex the Killer and Lynx, which was, as I recall, a bit of an upset. But, hey, they still won it. So, well done, and thank you for watching. That is... That's it. So, yeah, of course, I... I normally do 0k exhibition match casts every week, which has been at 1. I'm not sure if I'm going to have that time change anytime soon. It might. If I do, I'll announce it on Twitter, and you can see all the links in the bottom. So... Oops. Yeah. So, yeah, until then...